big for a phone, but and we could press stop so it doesn't have to be such a big file. Okay. Okay. And then that way it's easy. You can just do it to a phone. Okay. Alright, it looks good too. Yeah, it does look good. Yeah, Very sweet. nice. Good lighting. No, it's not on. Oh, oh. The mic's on. For me, it's a little low. But you can be sitting. I'm okay. I might stand. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, by the bar. Come join us. Come join us. Did you start recording? Oh my gosh, okay. So everybody, please, you're welcome to make your way over to this area. And I would like to say welcome everyone. My name is Bracha. Um, we have company next door. They're very excited to about our open mic night. Um, I really don't know how this whole night came together. I mean, I do, obviously. We all know who's in charge. Um, but I want to say that I'm just so grateful for everybody who came here and to, to God for putting everybody together. I mean, look at all these faces. I mean, people that we know, people we know, people we don't know, people that we've seen online, people, you know, maybe we texted before. Um, I think it's so special to have everybody here for, you know, for, for, for the purpose of sharing and opening up our hearts to each other. Plus, it's an open mic situation, which who ever heard of open mic in South Florida? Area so far. Um, but we have a beautiful evening plan for you. Um, my dear friend Rena is going to follow me with a beautiful meditation. And then we're gonna have guests from the audience come up and, and share their heart story. And then the Erez and Jericho are gonna entertain us. But um, before we get on with that, I just want to, I would like to draw everybody's attention to, to the very interesting notion that wherever you were an hour ago, or yesterday, or a year ago, or even where you were born. All of that is in preparation for this moment. And every moment is a culmination of all the previous moments. And I think we're all very lucky to be in this space together, this big, wide open space of nature. <laughs> Rabbi Nachman would be so happy. Um, so thank you everybody for preparing yourselves to come to this very moment. I always like to say Shehechianu because really it's like just everything came together at the perfect place and time. So without uh, further ado, my dear friend, um, soul sister, Rina Perkel. I don't see her. There she is. Come on up, Rina. Thank you. Thank you so much for opening up your beautiful home and backyard to us to enjoy this lovely Florida evening together. Um, I'm so excited to be here. The last time we did an event together was a few weeks ago with Neely and Chuck Mayer, and that was super fun. And I see some people here who also joined us for that special event. I'd like to thank Erez for reaching out and planning this together with us and always being such an amazing initiator of creative collaborations that are meaningful and gatherings that bring people, bring people together. So thanks for that. We're really excited to start. Okay, so we have a big night ahead of us. I'm sure a lot of you would like to share some stories, um, some poetry. And um, <clears throat> I would like to lead us in a meditation um, about the Shekhinah. But before 
we go into the meditation, I wanted to just share some Torah with you that's connected um, to the meditation. Um, firstly, I wanted to just um, set the intention that in the hood of our learning and gathering and connecting to Hashem, that Hashem should bring healing to all the people in our lives that need healing and that Hashem should bring a zivug to all those people in our lives that would like to find their soulmate and get married and have children. And I'd like to direct the energy for all those people that need parnasa, that Hashem should bless them to have parnasa and shefa and bracha and hitzacha, and that the light that we bring into the world should spread outwards and lift it higher. I'm just going to hold the space a minute for some specific people that I'd like to pray for. Okay. So we know that um, Shavuot is coming up in less than, in about a week. And Shavuot in Kabbalah is called the Divine Wedding. It's the time when heaven meets earth. And the way that the Zohar describes it, it's the meeting or the union of Kucha Verichu, which is the masculine energy of Hashem, with um, Shrinte, which is the divine feminine aspect of Hashem. And um, this big event happened at Har Sinai at the giving of the Torah. And that's really when the gap was bridged between the supernal world, the spiritual world, and the physical world. And so the, the spiritual world is always represented as masculine because the spiritual world is the source for everything that we are sustained by. And the um, physical world is represented by the feminine because the feminine is connected to receiving. And the union of the two is symbolized by the symbol of the Magen David, which is two triangles, one facing up, representing the feminine, one facing down, representing the masculine, one on top of the other, the union. That's the symbol of the Jewish people, because our job is to unite the feminine with the masculine, this, the um, physical world with the spiritual world. I'm boiling. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm about to take the shape off. I can't. I don't know. Can we make it? You can turn it. I don't know what. I don't think that much. No, that's not. Is that okay? I'll take. I'll take. Oh, that's fine. It's more meditative. It's the lighting. No, I'm okay. I'm okay. It's okay. Sorry, I, I need I need one of those like virtual fans like that you go to Disney World with with your kids, right? Um, okay, so where was I? Oh, let me do the fast version so we could do the meditation because I want other people to get a chance to share also. So the Shekhinah is basically connected to the dwelling. Shekhinah comes from the root word. Who here speaks Hebrew? Shekhinah, what's the root shorish of Shekhinah? Shochen. And what does Shochen mean? Dwell. Dwell. What's another word that we have in Hebrew that has the same root? Shechuna. What neighborhood? Nice. <laughs> what else that's like biblical? What's the biblical word that we use that has the root sh uh, sh Oh. Mishkan. Huh? Mishkan, exactly. So Hashem says, um, uh, some, hold on a second. Vibanuli Mikdash Vishahanti Vitucham and build me a sanctuary and I will dwell among you. Right? So the dwelling, the Mishkan, and the Shekhinah are interconnected. Whenever you have words in the Torah that have the same root, they have a, they have a connection. So when Hashem created the the the, uh, the Mishkan, it was the first time that Hashem's presence was actually felt in a physical way in the world. And so now, in modern times, how do we connect to the Shekhinah? 
what would be a way that we experience God in the world? Prayer. Prayer. What else? Meditation. Meditation. What else? Acts of kindness. Acts of kindness. What else? Temple. What's that? Temple. Shul. Shul. Uh, yeah, gathering. Exactly. The Talmud says that whenever the two people come together and learn, the Shekhinah rests. Whenever ten people come together and daven, the Shekhinah rests. Sorry, I feel like I'm melting down over here. Uh, um, so, so the, the sh- where was the Torah given? What was the actual physical location of where the Torah was given? The desert. How do you say a desert in Hebrew? Midbar. What's the root shorish of the word midbar? Daber, speech. So midbar and daber have the same root. They're connected. Why was the Torah given in the wilderness? Why was the Torah given in the wilderness? Has anyone been to the wilderness? Has anyone been to the desert? Why do you think Hashem gave us the Torah in the desert? There's no boundaries in the desert. There's no limits. There's no rules. It's a free-for-all. They came out of Exodus free we are free to do what? So you needed to go from chaos into order. The, the Midbar, the, the desert, represents chaos. And the Torah represents order. That's the theme that keeps going throughout Torah, is the, the symbols of chaos and order. The Midbar is connected to speech, Midabar, because the Shekhinah is connected to speech. The Shekhinah is connected to the Sephirah of Malchus. What is Malchus? That's the literal meaning, but what is Malchus in Kabbalah? What is it? Kingship. Kingship. You're giving me the literal. What is it actually? What is Malchus? Crown? Crown? Okay. So Malchus is the um, the divine feminine in the Sephirotic system. So for example, it says in, in Kabbalah, that Malchus is Ima Letata. What does the Ima mean? Mother, Letata. What does Letata mean? The lower mother. <laughs> it's okay. The lower mother. That, what does the mother do? What's the mother's biggest role? What does the mother do? She's nurturing. A, mo- a mother is constantly providing, right? Constantly taking care of her children, constantly providing for her. And so Hashem is always providing for us, but it, it needs to be provided through a filter. And so the mother is the filter. The mother is the one that takes the energy that comes from Hashem and customizes it based on the needs of her children. That's what Malchus is. I'm really into connecting to Hashem through the feminine because so much of what Judaism is about is always putting Hashem within the context of the masculine. And when you look in the world, we see that we live in a binary world, right? There's masculine energy, there's feminine energy. And I think that one of the things that I love about Kabbalah is this idea that the closer we get to Mashiach, there's more of the rise of the feminine and the feminine energy in the world. And so what that means is that masculine is abstract, it's remote. Feminine is integrated, it's experiential, it's real, it's to be felt. We're at, we're at a stage in the world where people want to experience God, they want to feel God. That's why meditation has really taken off, because meditation is one of the ways in which we can actually feel God. You ready to meditate? I can't teach a class with Erez here and not share some Rabbi Nachman. So I'll just do a a quick one. (sighs) Rabbi Nachman says, Ki kar ha'adam hua sechel The essence of a person is their mind. Ve'alken b'makom she'choshev ha'sechel sham kol ha'adam The place where you put your mind, that's where you are. And so he's teaching us that where we put our attention and intention and our emotions, that's where we are. And so we can create anything through our mind.
Today we're going to do a meditation for guidance with from the Shekhinah. The way I like to see it is like, um, I'm sure, I mean, we're all Jewish here, so we've all been to New York. So, you know how like when you're in New York and you're on the street and it's smelly and busy and um, dirty <laughs> and, and then you go up a building and you go to the rooftop and everything looks so nice. And it's such a gorgeous city and you get to see Central Park and you're like, wow, that's a whole other perspective that I didn't see before. That's a lot like what meditation is. That sometimes in our lives, we're on the first floor and everything looks really yucky and we don't, we can't deal with it. We just want to run away from the yuckiness and the challenges, but we need to go up a few floors so we can get the rooftop view so we can have better clarity to know how to handle our day-to-day -day lives. And that's what meditation does for us. Okay, let's go inward. Begin by making yourself comfortable uncross your arms, your legs. If you like, palms facing up. Close your eyes. Relax every part of your body. Start with your head and your shoulders. Move all the way down to your toes. Let's start with our breath. Inhale for five, hold for five, and exhale for five. Repeat that cycle. Do it comfortably. While you're doing that breathing, I want you to shut out all outside noise, the sounds around you, the noise running through your head, and just put all the focus on your breath. As you breathe, feel your body begin to relax. Your emotions are calm. Your thoughts are calm. Feel that your whole being is resonating with the rhythm of your breath. Inhale and exhale. Release any tension, any stress. Take deep breaths. Breathe in calm. Breathe in joy. You're open, you're centered, you're peaceful. I want you to choose and believe that we are all connected as one soul. Just as the Shekhinah rested in the Bet HaMikdash, open yourself up to receive the Shekhinah within yourself the portal where heaven meets earth is within your heart. <clears throat> the Shekhinah is the mediator between us and Hashem. I'd like for you to visualize the energy of a mother holding her child nursing her child, feel the warmth, feel protected, embraced, cared for, you feel calm, you feel safe, you feel like a baby, unconditional love, 
completely surrounding you and pouring all over you. And just like a mom sings a baby her lullaby with the angels surrounding her children from all angles and ending with the Shekhinah over their head. Feel Hashem's presence all over you with the Shekhinah over your head. Val Roshi Shekhinah Val. Could even say it as a mantra. Val Roshi Shekhinah El. Val Roshi Shekhinah El. Now I want you to imagine yourself in a bubble of divine light surrounding you all around, protecting you, a space where you feel safe, David HaMalach says, one who trusts in Hashem is surrounded by love and kindness. I'm going to share a prayer with you now that I want you to say out loud. Ribono shel olam. Repeat after me. Ribono shel olam. You created me. You give life to me. You gave me my soul. I'm choosing you. I want to connect only to you, Hashem. I depend only on you. Ribono Shalom. You created me. You give life to me. You gave me my soul. I choose to connect to only you, Hashem. I depend only on you. Now I want you to ask Hashem for help something that you want help with, that's a challenge in your life that you'd like to heal, you'd like to get clarity on, knowing that everything that happens is for the good. Gamzula Tova. I know this is good. Hashem makes things happen the way that they should. One of my favorite lullabies. Take a minute to sit in the stillness, listen, receive, be open. Take your time, and when you're ready, open your eyes. Thank you. Who's next? Uh, I'm not next, but I will be introducing who's next. Okay, great. (laughs) 